Okay, so now that we've covered the Revolutionary War Part 1, which is like the battles and such, um, during class, we're going to cover Part 2 here at home, which is victory and then post-victory, what kind of government did we create? Okay, so factors leading to victory. Um, diplomatic factors include Benjamin Franklin negotiating a treaty of alliance with France. Um, he did this in Paris in September of 1783. It took about two years after the Battle of Yorktown um, in order to finally negotiate this out, and then it was signed September 1783. And it is known as the Treaty of Paris. Um, Benjamin Franklin was a very good diplomat, um, and he got us a lot of a lot of land and a lot of concessions from the British, so it's great. Okay, so the terms of the Treaty of Paris. Um, now, if you look at this map, you can see the original 13 states, which those are the exact same ones as the original 13 colonies, and then um, you see the U.S. territory that we gained thanks to the Treaty of Paris, um, which was originally French land slash British land slash we don't really know. Then it became U.S. territory thanks to that Treaty of Paris. Um, France decides to recognize the colonies as independent, so that gives the new United States legitimacy. Um, then land from the Atlantic coast west towards the Mississippi River and from the Great Lakes south to Florida was granted to the United States. So that's a big chunk of land. I mean, it doubled us. Um, and then the U.S. should pay any debts it owed to Britain. I mean, that's just fair. I mean, you pay what you owe. And also the British needed to evacuate its posts in U.S. territory. We're like, get out. We've got enough to do. You lost the war. It's our land now. Okay, so more factors leading to victory. You've got military factors with good old George Washington. He was the general of the American army. He avoided any situation that threatened the destruction of his army um, and made it a war of attrition. Um, he was not always the best general um, when it came to military strategy and such, but he was always the best when it came to taking care of his men. He kept that army together whenever defeat seemed inevitable. Um, he did not want to lose any men. So that's what made him so well-loved by the people, especially his men. And then, Battle of Yorktown. It was the American victory versus the British, and we finally benefited from the French presence. They helped us out quite a bit and helped us to win and end the revolution. So now we've got this new government that we created once the revolution was done. Um, now, the Articles of Confederation had a lot of issues with them, and that's why we don't still have them today. Um, we were very, very afraid of a powerful central government like Britain's. I mean, can you blame us? We had just fought a war to get rid of a powerful central government. Um, so the articles were written by American political leaders, and it was adopted at the end of the revolution. Um, it was evidence of how the national government should operate. Um, so, first feature that we're going to talk about. No chief executive. Means no president, no king, no, no main leader. Why? Fear of a strong central government with another powerful executive like King George III. Um, again, we, we had just fought a war to get rid of King George and a powerful leader. We were not going to go anywhere near that again. Problem with this is the lack of leadership from a central or national government means no single leader. Now, normally that's like, eh, whatever, but what if another country needs to come talk to us? Who are they going to talk to? 
there are 13 different leaders for 13 different states. Um, so that became a big problem. Well, who is the most important leader? And then leads to issues. Next feature, um, all laws must be approved by nine out of 13 states. Why? Well, they wanted to protect the power of individual states and they were afraid of a strong national government or a strong central government. The problem with this is it's very difficult for nine states to agree. And then it's also the central government can't get a whole lot done. Um, if you've got to have nine out of 13, that's a very strong majority to get something done. Um, are you really going to get a lot of them to agree, especially if you've got Northern versus Southern, um, because you've got different economies entirely. So you've got different business interests and also then you've got slavery versus non-slavery and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of issues that make making laws almost impossible. So the next thing is Congress doesn't have the power to tax citizens. Well, why not? Again, fear of being unfairly taxed like it had been under the British rule. Um, do you get the idea that this was a really bad breakup and we were still really afraid of getting hurt? Um, this is how the U.S. kind of felt towards Britain. We had been taxed for so long, so hard, that we were afraid of it happening again. So the problem with this is states choose not to pay their taxes. I mean, if if you're given the option not to pay your taxes, of course you're not going to pay them. That's extra money coming out of your pocket that you don't want to give up. Um, and then Congress doesn't have the funds to operate effectively and govern effectively if there's no taxes. That's why we pay taxes is so that the government can run somewhat effectively. Okay, next we have no power to draft an army. Well, why? Because we were afraid of a strong central government with a strong military. Um, they might take away the rights of citizens. Think back to that quartering act. We were really, really afraid of being mistreated again. Problem with this is it left the country very vulnerable and we have no military floor, force that is dependable. So if somebody wants to come attacking, they could. We have no military force to stop them. Um, that also occurs with pirates on the open seas, not just we have to worry about France, Spain, and England trying to get land back. Um, we also have to worry about pirates on the open seas. So it causes a lot of issues to not have a standing army. Okay, next you have no national court system. So why not? We were very afraid of a strong central government and with a court system that could be unfair to the rights of states. Problem, disputes between two or more states could not be settled fairly because if two states have a problem with each other, they're trading or whatever, the court that it is decided in is going to side with its home state. It's not gonna side with the other state. Um, so it could be unfair. Another issue is all amendments or changes to the Articles of Confederation must be approved by all 13 states. It, no more of this 9 out of 13. That's just for basic laws. This is 9 out of 13, or this has to be all states 
have to approve any changes to these Articles of Confederation. Why? Well, they wanted the states to have a very large say in the shaping of the government. The problem with this is that it's nearly impossible to make any changes. I mean, think back to making laws with 9 out of 13. It's difficult there to get any laws made or passed, but with 13 out of 13, it was never ever going to happen. That causes a lot of trouble. Okay, now you have no power to collect debts owed by states. Again, this goes back to like the whole tax thing too. Well, why? There is a fear of a strong central government that would force the states to pay for things that they didn't want. The problem with this is there are no funds to operate effectively. It goes back to the same idea as the no power to tax. Um, now, we have no power to settle disputes among the states. Why? Well, we wanted the states to have the ultimate authority in resolving the disputes. So there is no, like, think about it like this. If two kids are fighting in the classroom, they, there's no teacher. This would be this instance with no teacher. So the kids can still fight as long as they want to, but there's no teacher to stop them. This is the same way that it works. They wanted the states to have the final authority. So that would be like the kids having the final authority, um, not the teacher. It caused a lot of chaos. The problem with it, disputes weren't resolved and it created a lot of disunity among the states um, where they just, they couldn't get along and nothing could get settled. So the result to a lot of these problems in the Article of Confederation is Shay's Rebellion, which we will talk about in the next notes video. So I hope you have a great afternoon or evening.